listening to the Budget Overland Podcast, where we talk everything overlanding, have guests on regularly, and even have a bonus show on Mondays called Overland Shenanigans, which it's like it sounds, a bunch of shenanigans. Stick around, see who's on today's episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Budget Overland Podcast. I am your host, Benji, and today is really special because we've got some Jeeple and Van Lifers rock crawlers and overlanders all in one in the room and dog lovers uh i've got with me in studio ash and ron and they are from backcountry beagles is that correct how's it going it is yes correct how's it going good appreciate you guys coming on i sent uh you guys a message i think through instagram and i was like hey do you guys want to come on the podcast And you're probably like, who is this guy? What does he what does he want? So yeah. I appreciate you guys being super flexible and coming on the no, show. Yeah, we appreciate you uh, for having us. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for the invites. Yeah. So if you guys haven't heard, they've got a YouTube channel and it's Backcountry Beagles. And uh, they're doing awesome stuff. I, I, I watched their Moab trip they just did and their green XJ and uh they they're doing a van conversion right now for you know just turning it into yep. <laughs> a recreational sleeper or whatever and it, it's just fun content Correct, to watch yeah. you guys are yeah. all over the place uh where do you want to start you yeah, want to go back <laughs> back to the 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 rock crawling days what what got you started in uh you know motorized vehicle recreation that would definitely be Ron i think he could speak more to that well yeah <laughs> um I mean, we've had Jeeps for a while now, probably. It was since 2016. 2016, yeah. yeah. That's when we first got into Jeeps. I had had 4x4s before then for a little bit. But the Jeep stuff kind of started, you know, we both then Ashley got her own Jeep. We had Cherokees. Yeah, actually, Ron got his first Jeep, and I actually offered to buy it from him (laughs) because I liked it so much. But he wouldn't, so he had the red one. And then actually about probably two months later, we went out and bought the green one. Not the one you see today. That one, the first one crashed. We actually, the one... That we have now is an identical replica. Yeah, mm. <laughs> basically, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we we've had those two jeeps like for the past whatever since 2016, like Ash said. Um, and where do we go from there? Um, um, well, we lived in Massachusetts when we bought both of those jeeps, and it was always Ron's dream to like go to Moab, like go out, do all the rock crawling, like all those come out trails. west, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually like experience off roading in the sense that isn't Massachusetts where you could get arrested. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So we we moved out here and then it just kind of snowballed. We just we fell in love with outdoors, off-roading, you know, yeah. anything we could basically get our hands on and go outside and do. Yep. That's and really we've cool. only been out here for about 2 years right now. Um and we started the YouTube about about a year and a half ago. But yeah, yeah. Ron, Ron just got bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun so far. Yeah, so you guys wanted to change of pace from I guess Massachusetts, that's where you both were from originally, like grew up yes, there correct yeah and then you're just our, like our whole lives up until the past two years <laughs> nice and you're like you know moab's out there you've got northern uh, california you've got you know desert down south and you're like where's where's a good centrally location like for this is that why you moved to exactly where you're at i i mean yeah it kind of came to i mean we just we keep saying we threw a dart at, yeah. dart at a map and we just went for it and it just happened to be kind of right near Moab, which is really cool. We're only about an hour and a half from Moab. And that is wild. So we're out there, not this time of year, because it's like 100 degrees out. Right. But uh, every other month of the year, we're, we're like there every weekend. Yeah, I'd say we're probably like an, an hour, maybe less than an hour from like so many different types of climates. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can go to, to the west, to Moab, or we can drive an hour south into the mountains and into the Rocky Mountains. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. We're we're in central Missouri, or I am. And, you know, if I'm wanting to go mm-hmm. to some kind of off-roady, fun, you know, place, it's it's Arkansas. And it's kind of underrated because there's a lot yeah. of really fun technical trails. And, and, and the different, uh, I guess, seasons with the foliage, uh, and then you've got the dry seasons, and then you've got the spring where it's like, you know, water and mud. So you got, you know, a little bit of everything. But yeah, man, that's awesome. If we're going to Colorado, it's it's a 14, 16 hour drive just there, you know, to the to Denver. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then you gotta keep going to get past yeah, Denver. Right. And it's like, you so know, all the, the fun good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, I, I feel you like on having that in your backyard, I'm sure like right now you guys not really being from the area, you probably are like, This is so, you know, 
so cool. You know, a lot of people that are probably yeah, really local been... to it take it take advantage or you know, they're just used to it. Yeah, yeah. I definitely say yeah, they take it for granted like a lot yeah. of guys I work with, they I tell them every week, well, Pretty every much. after the weekend, I come back to work and I tell them what we did, where we went and they're like, "Wow, I've never even done that." And, really? Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> it'll be like you'll tell them you have Ron has three day weekends, so he'll be like, "Yeah, well, I went down to Arizona," and they're like, "In your weekend?" Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah. whatever you guys, uh, well, obviously you both like the you know outdoors and like to uh, rock crawl and all that stuff. Uh, talk to me more about the overlanding sense because you do have two Cherokees, mm-hmm. and Correct. you know one's more designation like for like a rock buggy. Correct, and like the other one's more fitted for long distance uh, camping travel. Is that accurate? Yeah, correct. So my red Cherokee that I have, it's parked in my garage, torn apart right now. <laughs> like it's been <laughs> the past couple of months. But that is the Jeep I built about, I'd say, three or four years ago, like purely for rock crawling. Uh, I mean, I would call it like a mild rock crawling build because it's nothing crazy. Yeah. You know, that I think of it. But then we built Ashley's Cherokee, which was the main idea was overlanding. Like that's what we were going to do with it. And it's kind of we've done a lot of rock crawling with it now. So <laughs> It's yeah. gotten weird, but yeah, that was the idea of the two Cherokees. Yeah, the whole main build for the green Cherokee actually was that we knew we were getting married and we actually wanted to do like a, a really long, like cross crunchy road trip honeymoon, which we did. We did like a five weeks in the Jeep and that's wow. pretty much what we built it for. Yeah, and it, it got us to, you know, Massachusetts all the way down to Key West and then to California. So it brought wow. us pretty far. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did about. 8,000 miles in five weeks and, and a 23 year old Cherokee. Holy smokes. All right. Yeah. So now I've got to know because I've got a, a third gen forerunner and it's 23 years old. You know, it's a 2000 yeah. model. Same thing. Yep. Same year. Oh, yeah. So, so like, you know, you go through, I mean, it's high mileage too. So there's like the <laughs> bushings, all the aftermarket stuff, the oil leaks, all the things to get it reliable. And I've been chasing like a vibration gremlin for the last <laughs> probably six months. Yeah. And, <laughs> turns out like i thought i paid a guy to do both my front hubs both my bearings and yeah, right. and it only the left the driver's side was the only one that was replaced and so oh, like wow. i never thought to troubleshoot to towards a bearing you know i jack it up kind of and you know fin- you know mess with it but never could it wasn't very apparent up until a couple weeks ago where it was like super loose yeah and yeah so that was my issue uh now that i've you know worn out my my mud terrain tires yeah, you know that's, they're all that's rough so, yeah so now it's like <laughs> I, I fixed the problem but now i've got you know a tire problem but it is what it is so tell me like pre-trip oh, like what did you guys do to make it road worthy or did you just like kind of do a glance of it and then just oh, you no, know, it hit was, the road i mean it was like a six month process it maybe <laughs> even longer but yeah. no like it got to that point where that green the green jeep it was like stock before that before uh, like what it looks like now and uh the engine literally blew up on me on the highway and then it wow. sat for like a month and then that's when like we kind of started the rebuild process i guess you could say yeah and i i don't like to say that we restored it because we didn't restore a cherokee yeah it sounds weird but like that's we literally had the whole motor out we have the had the entire suspension out of the thing like we would literally get everything in that jeep it was yeah. brand new before that trip yeah it was basically just like get out of work go to the shop at least for you for the most part go to the shop just go through absolutely every single part and piece yeah like, obviously you don't need to do that if you're gonna go to overlanding we just no, kind of went a little overboard i think it kind of was uh to the point where we had driven it for like four years before like and just beat it up at that point and then we we wanted to kind of rebuild it at that point yeah. so it yeah. was it was from massachusetts it was rotted so we had to do floors <laughs> we had to we put a long arm kit in it uh we axle swaps and whatnot put yeah. the new engine in it and then we took it on that on that long trip. Cool. That's really that's that's impressive to be honest with you because a lot Thank of people you. nowadays they'll go out and buy a $50,000 rig and then they'll yeah. throw a bunch <laughs> of money at it and it's like anybody can do that. Honestly, anybody can do that. But how many yeah. people are out there rocking a 20, 25-year-old rig? And even a 15-year-old rig, people are they're not even sporting those out on the trails. Yeah, yeah that's or, what I'm or, saying. Or long distance, yeah. So I don't want to like just jump to your van build just yet but yeah. i did recently just watch your guys's uh, rubicon trip mm-hmm. that yeah. looked really fun and it, it's <laughs> it didn't look busy at all uh, like 
what's up with that? What time of year did you guys go? It looked um, like it was spring. We were there. No, it was like only a few it weeks was ago. July. Really? It was the middle of July, but we were right in between two of the um, the Jeep Jamborees that were going. Ah. Yeah. So we went the week right in between. So I think obviously people were waiting to do it. At yeah, we time. we were there. I think Tuesday through Friday. Yep. And that's like like Ash said, we were there in between the two jamborees, so wow. there wasn't many people there. Yeah, we only really saw like maybe a few groups of like two here or there, and a few groups of, like four or five, and then one big group of buggies. Are yeah, there. that. So whenever you guys said you lived about a, a thousand miles away from the front, mm-hmm. uh, the the entrance of that, and you know you guys are out. That's pretty. That's it. I've never done it, but like yep. it's a people talk about it. You know, it's either challenging or it's not. And well, if it was you're challenging. out there like. Can you go through the the setup of your your Cherokee? Tell us what you did, like what tire size, if you're re-geared, yeah. locked, anything like that. Yep. So uh, it's 2000 Cherokee. It's an automatic. We got a Ford 88 rear end. Uh, that's got an ARB air locker in the back. Still leaf spring in the back. Uh, the front is just a Dana 30. It's got um, it's a high pinion Dana 30. Uh, WJ Knuckles one ton steering. Yeah, and that axle actually came from Ron's Jeep because it has a front locker, but mine. Didn't, didn't at the time. <laughs> so we decided since his was already torn apart we just take the axle from his and use it yeah the time. we literally took the entire axle put it in that cheap uh, you know what that is that's that's called a donor rig yeah, yeah. It's, you, it's literally you gotta... a part cheap at this point <laughs> <laughs> no, for now. no uh, shame no shame yeah exactly um but yeah so it's it's locked front and rear it's on 35 inch tires uh non no bead locks um that jeep doesn't have really any skid plates it doesn't have a gas tank skid plate it doesn't have rock sliders all it's got is a transfer case skid plate. So I was kind of wow. worried about that. Uh, and we did come down to the rockers and the doors quite a lot. Never the gas tank, which was a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what they say about that trail being tough, and it is true. Like, it's not a joke, especially in like a mild build like that, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, you see a lot of guys out there with buggies and stuff and, and big 40s and 42s yeah. even, you know. And of course, they're more or less just crawling over some of those yeah. obstacles. Yes. But like for you guys to have probably a fully loaded rig, mm-hmm. uh, yep. your tent was on there uh, and 35s, you know, that's impressive, you know, but you, you did have, you did have a breakdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, we did. <laughs> I, I was, I was stressing for you, but you guys kept your cool. You're like, yeah, no big deal. We'll get at it. I love the positivity, you know, yeah. and, no, and we Ash were... was walking the whole time. <laughs> yeah. You yeah know. I was, cause when I'm, I'm not a big rock crawler. I'm more of an overlander. I like the, you know, more easy, relaxed stuff. So for me, yeah. it was more stressful to be in the Jeep than yeah. not. <laughs> so I was like, I guess I'll just become a video- videographer and record absolutely everything. I and was... I think. That it was, was good. I think I walked about yeah. 15 miles that entire yeah. trip. It was really five. I think at the end, yeah, I sprayed my ankle. It was the only reason I couldn't uh, get in the, I couldn't uh, yeah. do the rest. But on no. top of that, your right rear leaf, was it your helper or which one broke? It was literally the the like main leaf that the holds main that axle in place. Yeah. And you're like, ah, we'll just throw some straps yeah. on it. We'll, <laughs> we'll get out of here. I'm like, guy, you're on a boulder right now. I but know. you did. You guys was, got out. It was intense. I mean, we broke that leaf spring halfway through the trail. And so there was no going back at that point. Like we, it would either yeah. we turn around, do all the hard stuff we just did or keep going and do the trail and do the hard stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it worked out. We used some ratchet straps at first and then some guy gave us some duct tape and the duct tape worked really well, actually holding like the leaves all together. Yeah, I thought he was joking. He was like, you want to roll a duct tape? I was like, oh, that's funny. That's a good joke. But yeah, it, was, it worked it was good. better than the ratchet strap. Nice. Yeah, we had to redo it once. Uh, yeah. Once on the trail. And then when we got off the trail, we redid it again, and then that got us a thousand miles home, no problem. You drove it home <laughs> like that. That is yeah. incredible. Yeah, you know, we were gonna try to find a new leaf spring or swap it before then, but it had done so well on the trail. I was thinking it's gonna do even better on the road. So wow. So did you have any crab walking, or, or did it tear up your pinion or anything? No, or? I, I mean we were able to pull it into place pretty good. Like we had rat wow. straps on it, and then the duct tape. So it, I mean it was straight as an arrow. Wow. It did so. chew up the tire a little bit, but well, I mean from from like the body hitting. Yeah, coming down the tire. Right? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's, that's yeah. impressive. Really but, cool. Yeah. And I'm I'm surprised. And you guys, I'll just tell you right now. I don't care if you guys share your videos in Budget Overland Facebook group. I know you guys yeah. just joined. <laughs> I have no problem with people sharing videos, but I just as you know, 
And I always tell people, just make a brief description. Don't just copy paste. I think a lot of people get cringy over the YouTube stuff because mm-hmm. people copy paste yeah, their gotcha. stuff. And you could tell when people are legit or not. But <laughs> especially after being on the show, people can relate to your to your guys' names and then hopefully to your content, get some travel yeah, over right. your channel. Because yeah, be I think awesome. you guys are putting out a lot of really good content and it's yeah. not like it's not like me. I'm not <laughs> recording with my cell phone. Uh, I don't know. Are you guys recording with your cell phone? Let's talk gear. No. I think you guys have a DSLR, don't you? Yeah, you got I, got a, I got a Sony A7 III that we bought. Dead, dead think, gum it. Yeah, <laughs> I bought that back in like like back in January <laughs> is when we got serious about this. Yeah. Nice. And I think we went out and got the drone. Oh, well, we got the drone in like November. You I say think. we, but I think yeah. we had a lot of impulsive buys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got, same got, address. It's we. Yeah. yeah, got the camera. Uh, just because I want to make good videos, you know. Yes. Um. So yeah, and I think it really does help. It really does, and that's like, um, I've got I just you know I, I plink around and put videos up on my little channel. I'm I'm not, I don't put them out regularly enough. But if yeah. like I get a group of guys that want to go you know and do some wheeling down in Arkansas and stuff, I like to document stuff. But it you know I'm getting to the point to where I want to step it up just a little bit, and you know I think it it does play a big role, especially when in, in today's world. You know, if you're watching 1080 or, or 4K stuff, yeah, it really adds to your content. Mm-hmm. And and you know, five years ago, sure, six years ago, who cared? You know, if it was you know kind of pixelated or blurry or whatnot. But I think if if you're wanting to do this kind of stuff, you you, you need to be a little serious about it. And I think you guys truly are. I'm just saying for like people that expect it to just happen. You know, you got you put a little skin in the game, and yeah. and obviously your time, your time and money and all that stuff. It just yeah, it adds I agree. up. No, it's a lot of fun too. Um, I mean, we how long did we use the GoPro for a little bit? Um, well, we found the GoPro. I want to say we found the GoPro. Um, so <laughs> on a trail. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, we started using the GoPro in April um, last year. Yeah, and we used that for a while, but it, yeah, the quality just wasn't very consistent or very good. And then for a few of our videos, actually, we did use our phone. But that was more for the vlog style stuff. Yeah, we, we were like in a weird period where we wanted we wanted to have the nice camera, but yeah. we decided to try out the phone for like three videos. It wasn't really working how we wanted yeah. to. And then There's not just... enough storage on iPhones no. to do that. Like, <laughs> no. I could never get enough. <laughs> yeah. So do you guys collect, like, do you both edit the videos or is there one of you particularly likes to edit or what do you do there? Creativity, you know, doing all so, that fun stuff. Literally, like the last video, that van one you you were talking about, Ashley edited that video. That was the first one she edited. Nice. All of the others, like forty two others before that, were all <laughs> and nice. we do obviously sit down and watch them together. And you know, we we bounce off of each other on you know, nice. like how is it? What do you think? And we'll remove stuff, add stuff here, all that good stuff. But uh, Ron is definitely, I feel like, the more creative <laughs> one out of the two. They flow nice. Is Thank where you. I was going. Appreciate even the it. last video, you couldn't even tell that somebody else, you know, that you you, you edited it by yourself or whatever. Like it's it, a good they, teacher, they f- is what it was. <laughs> well, good. What software, editing software, you guys use? I know a lot of people out there are wanting to do YouTube channels and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. What, what kind of software do you guys prefer? We're using Adobe Premiere Pro. Really? Okay. Yep. I think um, there's something else out there that other people use. Uh, I don't know the one off the top of my head. I know for our thumbnails, I use Canva, and they're really good to do shorts and stuff. I've never mm. done long form content on Canva, but they're a little bit cheaper of an option and they do more like kind of graphics and um, cool. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, for the editing, I, I use Premiere Pro. I've used it since the first video, so it works Sweet. well yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. As long as you're comfortable with that software, why change it? So yeah, exactly. Like, and yeah. every, every, everything's different. I, I, uh, if I'm not shooting with my iPhone, which is an MOV file and I could have like regular files from like uh, my Samsung or an SD card or something. I could do it through DaVinci Resolve, and I really prefer that software. Yeah. But since I use most of my stuff, uh, my videos come from my iPhone. I use my iPad up. up oh, smart. Uh, oh, no way. Edit okay. stuff. But it's like, it's not. It's not your guys' quality. It's 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 okay quality, but it's it's uh you can't do much with it. You know. Yeah, so yeah. like, anyway, going back to that stuff. <laughs> but that's fun. You know, I think a lot of people. They like to document this stuff if they're out doing it. And who cares, you know, if, if there's 50 different YouTube people doing whatever. We're all different. And, yeah, and it's I agree. really I mean, just never the fact see that you all. could sit down and actually, like, make it through editing at the end of a video. Because it's not easy to edit. Like, no. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, are you guys foodies? 
Oh yeah, I mean, most of I, would say I, am, I wouldn't say Ron is. I <laughs> try to like, make him. Do you guys like enjoy camping or or cook camping? No. Or is that like <laughs> a? I'm a foodie, but I hate cooking yeah. at camp. Yeah. I don't know it's why. It's such a chore. It's a pain in the butt, especially after a long yeah. day. You're just ready for something quick. Exactly. I, I'm yeah. the same way. But Most some of my people videos, just... you'll see, like I say, like this is quick, easy, and simple, and that's why I'm making it. Yeah. No other reason. Every once in a while, you'll see us like making a ribeye. Yeah. Yeah. Usually not. <laughs> I always joke with people whenever they go camping, it's like the first night's always steak and potatoes. Yeah, right. The second night might be something else, and then by the third <laughs> night, you're like having tacos or something. Yeah. If you're lucky, maybe peanut butter <laughs> jelly sandwiches or something. Our go-to is usually just hot dogs, because all you need is one pan, and like you can just use a paper towel to wipe it out, and you're done. Yep. Yeah, plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Are there any? Is that your your go to meal? Is there? Oh, any? Our go to is like our at least probably five or six of our videos. Oh it's Coney God. Island hot dogs, which probably uh. a lot of people don't know what those are. And it's um, actually a food that you can get in Rhode Island, and it's a a steamed you got a steamed bun, a fried hot dog, not fried, but like you know grilled hot dog, and then a Coney Island hot dog sauce, which is basically like a really simple meat chili sauce but not like chili like you would think like with the beans just like a mm-hmm. meat sauce uh chopped onions mustard and celery salt it's a coney Island yeah, dog. yeah it's wicked good it's the only it's thing nice. i know how to make really really well <laughs> <laughs> nice well that's good i'm i always like asking people whenever you know what's a good camp meal because i'm getting tired of the same stuff and typically lately i don't even i mean i'll, I'll be honest sometimes this is lunchable you know yeah, pop that no, sucker open i mean that simple stuff's easy but that's what I'm trying to say too. Is I just do simple stuff. I just the less ingredients, the better when it comes to overlanding and camping. Yeah, right. Yeah. You guys rocking a fridge or a cooler? Um, well, we do have a fridge. We had, we have a Dometic. It's like one of those drawer Dometic fridges. Cause the we little short that. ones. Yeah. Yep. yep. And I love that thing. Really cool. Uh, but we recently took out. We had a whole platform in the back of that green Jeep. We took it all out because we're gonna redo it eventually. So we don't have the fridge in there right now. So we went out. For the Rubicon trip, we went out and bought a uh, 46 liter, 45, yeah. 45 liter Yeti, uh, just nice. a cooler. And that thing worked really good on the trail. Uh, but it'll definitely be nice to have the fridge back eventually. Yeah. And you're, you said you're going to redo your whole platform kind of set up in the back of that thing? Yeah. So or we for that trip or just well, in general? In general, like we took it out. The plan was to redo it for that trip, but we didn't get mm-hmm. to it. So, yeah. So we want to eventually... Put just a make new it a little bit more neater, have better yeah. drawer system, and like just make it more organized, I would yeah. say, and lighter, yeah. probably lighter than wood, maybe aluminum. Yeah, De- I definitely want to make it out of aluminum because we had it made out of two by fours and plywood before. It would, it took up a lot of weight. It was mm-hmm. yeah, they get they get wicked heavy quick. Yeah, and then especially on trails and stuff, you don't want that. No, uh, but cool, man. Yeah, I always like talking to people about you know their setups because, like you said, organization. Uh, especially if, if you're cooking or setting up camp in the middle of the night and you need something, yeah. uh, exactly. you need to know where that stuff is at. And <laughs> yeah. especially like I know with me and my wife and my son, when we all go camping together, we have different load in, uh, you know, scenarios. So like when they're not with me, I take their stuff out, mm-hmm. but no, like, yeah, for real. we all know where the aspirin is. The Tums are, you know, our toothbrushes, <laughs> toothpaste, all the, you know, the basic stuff. And then, you know, everything else is like up in the air. So yeah, right. Do you guys have, um, and this is just kind of just random, I just like asking people questions, but do you guys have like different camp setup um, jobs, I guess, if you will? Say you have to set up the tent, Nash cooking, you know, dinner or collecting firewood. Do you guys have any kind of roles, I guess, you guys kind of assume from each other? or Probably. I feel like you mostly do the tent, typically. Yeah, I, usually I think start so. Cooking. Yeah, I think if we just pull up on camp and we've been wheeling all day. I'll probably set up the tent while Ash gets like the table out and when I starts cooking. Yeah, I'd say so. That's good. I think I think that's good to split it up. And that way you guys are both done at the same time. You're both yeah, feeling exactly. the same yeah. way. Just get it done. <laughs> exactly, Rip that yeah. band-aid off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Anything off-road you guys want to talk about and then we'll move into your van build? Anything that I've kind of left out? It's hmm. up to you. Anything? I can't think of anything, but No, I mean No, I don't think so. <laughs> Cool. We, can go into, well, we can go into van life now. Van life. Turn the <laughs> turn turn the page. All right. So anyway, I, I had something funny to say. I just want. <laughs> so why the van? That's that's Ashley. Yeah, that would probably be me because he has brought me on so many hard like trails out here thus far, and uh, I, I just 
I love overlanding too in my my green Cherokee, but somehow every single time I ask Ron, I'm like, is it an easy trail? Is it going to be mm. like, are we going to get to camp quick? Is it going to be whatever? And it always ends up being somehow the hardest and longest trail. Yeah. Ever been. <laughs> now, mm. I kept watching like these YouTubers that are doing van life and we actually ended up driving. I used to have a Jetta, a 2019 Volkswagen Jetta, and we drove it home to Massachusetts uh, to visit our, our family back there. And after doing that and living out of my car for a few days, I was like, this is stupid. Like I only drive four minutes to work every day. Why don't yeah. I just trade this in and we get a van and start building that? Like we've already built three, two, three, how many Jeeps? I don't yeah, know. A lot Jeeps of Jeeps. Yeah. Point. It's like, a I, lot. let's do something where like, I enjoy cooking. So like we can cook and we can just stop. It will be more comfortable for the t- the pups. Um, there's a whole vast amount of reasons why <laughs> yeah. the idea of van okay life. so i like the idea too but i didn't know if it because i always tell or i always say we're all on different journeys so like mm-hmm. we're like most people we're all on different budgets we all have different uh definitions of overlanding we have all the we're never going to agree on this stuff but i think we are always evolving in our outdoor recreation whatever that is is, is mm-hmm. it hiking bike biking whatever uh you know overlanding rock crawling even van life to where it's kind of comfortable yet you can still be out there remote and, and, you know, be vehicle dependent. Um, so I think that's super cool. If you guys want to go into kind of your build, uh, ideas or maybe check off some boxes that you guys have in mind, maybe like onboard power, onboard water, uh, what's your kitchen set up, your bed situation. If you guys want to kind of go into that, you can. I know you guys are making a lot of videos about it, yeah. Yeah. so I don't, don't need spoiler alerts, but if you guys uh, kind of want to just yeah. shout out your dreams with us, you know, yeah. on, on what yeah. your well, goal did, is for the van. I did want to specify that although we have a van, like we are, we have now a rock crawler, we have an off road overland vehicle, and now we have a van, and I think that it's going to be mostly for comfort. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, I mean, we certain trips we don't need the jeep for. Like if yeah. if we're driving back to Massachusetts to like spend it, time with family, then that it, is the probably the most comfortable way because I'm not a 23 year old vehicle across country is first of all not going to be good on gas. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. But as for like the inside, I know we're definitely going to do um, a full size um bed that stays there it's not going to fold up not going to turn into anything and that will be comfortable for us and the dogs and then we'll have um a closet we'll have like the whole kitchen yeah, set up a sink usual and a, van stuff. like your little stove um and nothing too crazy not like you know yeah not anything too crazy we'll have onboard power and onboard water um and then a what are those ones not the composting toilet the step below that i don't know what what it is but mm-hmm. that so so pretty much like stealth camping, if you guys need to roll up into like a, a parking lot and crash, you know, yeah. it's not going to be too, too much eye, eye yeah, candy exactly. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, we can still do like some light trails with it, I guess you could say. Like there's a few yeah. mountain passes here in Colorado that, I mean, they're just dirt roads and yeah. like yeah. the van, would it's a two wheel drive van, but it would make it up there. No problem. Yeah, you know? We did actually That's bring really it cool. out. We brought it out to Rocky Mountain National Park actually this past weekend to kind of test that all out. And yeah. we did learn the hard way that all trails is focused a little bit more for Jeeps, I feel like, than than mm. vans. But yeah, <laughs> we we ended up like trying to find oh, trails a, off road. Sorry, not all trails. That's for hiking. <laughs> we tried to find a nice place to park the van, and I had a nice overlook, and it ended up being a super rutted out road. But uh, we ended up camping at the trailhead, but it was still cool. That's cool. So you know, like you know, the average like I overlander. Yeah, that we there need to a, look into that a bit more. Yeah. I wonder if there's an app for like van life people to where they'll be like, hey, this this is a you know pretty scenic trail, kind of moderate, kind of mm-hmm. easy, whatever. I wonder if there's an app for that, you know. Well, if they haven't, if they don't have one, we yeah, should we'll have to make about, one. Yeah, <laughs> you should. We're, we're trade back in that. Nobody take that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Give me give me one percent of that and yeah, I'll be right. happy. Okay. You, That's true. you guys do all the work, I'll get one percent. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> uh sweet. Well, I'm excited and uh it seems like you guys are very methodical whenever it comes to like your measurements, the weight, the mold prevention, all that stuff. What mm-hmm. what kind of led you to that? Is it just from years of experience from from doing previous builds? Um, tell us a little bit more about that because it. I mean, I love I love watching people build stuff and it actually turn out you know cool. Yeah, right. Like whenever you guys were doing the foam board and stuff, you were setting mm-hmm. it down. I was like. Whew. Yeah. yeah, perfect. <laughs> like, nice. I think it's because Ron's a perfectionist, and everything has to be done. There's no cut in corners. It's always got to yeah. be done right. No, yeah. Um, 
maybe it is a little bit about I mean, I've been working on the Jeeps for a while. I've never like done carpentry stuff, so we had to learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even with the Jeeps, you always try to make ev- you you measure, you remeasure, you always make sure like it is the best product, it is the best. Yeah, you know, yeah. like to make like, sure the it's best good. Thing you could do, yeah. So I think that's kind of where it came with with uh, the van, and also we did so much research and just watched so many people's YouTubes. And it's like with vans, it's not like there's one certain way to do it that everybody thinks is best. Everyone does it a different way. And I think based off of like your sense of building things and then also my like knowledge in like chemistry and all that like <laughs> yeah. not letting wood rot there's no way yeah <laughs> that, or that smell kind of the mold out. and stuff my oh, wife yeah. has a nose like no other <laughs> yeah. and she'll walk into a house and she'll be like whoo and i'm like yeah i don't i don't smell anything <laughs> no yeah and like if we w- one time we stayed in uh in mexico on vacation in mm-hmm. a hotel and she goes man that's something just bothering my head mm-hmm. three wow, days no later way. i'm hacking because there was like black mold somewhere oh, no. and i'm like wow all right, I'm never gonna doubt your your nose again. But, <laughs> For real. <that's> funny. <laughs> but I was like, whenever you guys had that, uh, you know, the the paint you guys were using that was mold mold prevention or whatever, and uh, I was like, I wonder if they have <laughs> like like uh, what my wife has, like she yeah, can yeah. smell this stuff, like, and if there's yeah. like a story backstory to that. So yeah, anyway, I just don't want to have to refix. No, it. oh my god, that I, I think anything. that's probably the worst thing with I mean, vans or campers and rvs in general is like yeah. water getting in and mold and yeah. i can't even imagine tearing up that floor now that would that would be terrible <laughs> no and, and and a materials ridiculously expensive oh yeah definitely and then b my heart went out to you ron whenever you were the back part of your uh what do you call it just the back part of your floor you were like a 16th or yeah. a quarter inch off know, or right? something i was like no but <laughs> It came out good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then you. Then you cut the strips of wood, and you're like, I uh, already hit, I went ahead and glued those. Yeah, and, uh, came out really it turned good. Turned out, I was happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You were tired and ready to get that thing done. Oh yeah, so. yeah. And that was like well, a cool. whole. It took us like it was like two to three months. Like to, that video actually took two to three months to just record because we didn't we weren't doing it every single weekend because obviously we we're putting out other content yeah. in other places we've been. So it just. It's it's like a long a, process. Yeah. The van is like here and there. We work on it now. Yeah. That's that cool. sort of thing. Now that the floor is actually in it, the plywood though, it's like we can walk on it safely without worrying about anything. So that's why we're finally like, all right, let's just throw an air mattress in the back of it and start yeah. driving. Yeah. Sweet. So what, um, I guess you guys have big long distance travel plans for that, or is that more or less just for whenever you're wanting to do some more scenic, uh, light travel, if you will. I know going I mean, cross country is not light, but yeah. I mean, we are planning next year. We want to get it done for, I think like next J- July, we're going to go meet some family down in North Carolina. So we want to nice. get it done for that, but we're going to be using it here and there. Like, like, like you said, for small trips in, in Colorado, Utah, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Just uh, stuff, like I said, where we don't need the Jeep for off-roading. Right. I think if I could, I'd probably lean more towards doing a van build. You know, also have like the overland buggy or whatever. Yeah, right. But like, because if you're staying in a hotel nowadays, you're easily spending two hundred dollars a night. You know, mm-hmm. at at average, you know, for even like a lower end uh, hotel. Well, if you do that over a course of time, yeah, it's you know, crazy. You just sleep in your van. You'll you'll have the comfort of a home. You know, plus yeah. all the amenities with it. So it's like. And I think that's I why we s- are looking forward to the van is like that we like to have options. So like if we want to go rock crawling on the weekend, we can do that. If we want to go overlanding, we can do that. If we want to just yeah. go start driving and figure out where we end up, we can do that. In the yeah, van. exactly. Very cool. What's some of your influences for the van though? Like any channels you guys like to watch? Oh Anybody my God, that- yeah. <laughs> Ashley can answer I, that. <laughs> I love Kara and Nate, if you've ever seen their channel. They just they have been doing international domestic van life, any sort of travels for like seven years now. And they, they were probably a big inspiration. And then other van life people, maybe um, their buddies, Eamon and Beck, um, I really like to follow along with as well. But they just got rid of their vans, so you can watch <laughs> their previous van content. But that, that, that them too would is the most. Well, that's what I was gonna say too. Is a lot of people like the video content lately has been like, "Oh, we're quitting van life." Or <laughs> we why we quit van life? Is that just clickbait? Or that's or just is, for the it's views. Like, <laughs> most of it, yeah. Like their their clickbait. It was actually uh, van life is ending, but then they still had to get it home. So it was a whole van life video. Uh, so yeah, but. You got to yeah. be careful these days with the old clickbait because you'll you'll people are so gullible though it's funny I know 
but if you if have the same title, if they still watch through though once they click on it, then I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But yeah, we try to avoid the the clickbait. You or most for the most part. Yeah, I don't think we do any of that. I don't think no. so. No, you guys, yeah, you guys come across real genuine and everything, and, and yeah. that carries. You know, yeah, you definitely. Can't, you can't fake genuine, so <laughs> that's what I always tell people. <laughs> um, what else you guys want to talk about? It's pretty much an open book. You guys. Anything else uh-huh. going on? Well, hey, if you if you ever do do another big trip in Arkansas, we're willing to travel. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> yeah. come down. Oh, that's another thing. So we're in central Missouri. Oh, Missouri. Yeah, you said you go down to Arkansas. But yeah. we go to Arkansas. It's about a four or five hour trip for us. But there's, uh, I've got some friends that are down there. They don't do like the hard trails or anything because they're like in crossover vehicles and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, maybe put you guys in contact with them or whatever. But there is so gorgeous. Yeah, down sweet. in that state, and it's like they call it the natural state for run one reason. It's it's still like raw and untouched hmm. for the most part. You know, wow. you've got a lot of backcountry roads and stuff. Really? Um, okay. There's there's a couple ghost towns just because of you know the people. They, they, there's no stores and stuff. I, I'm saying that loosely. There's like probably from the 40s or 50s they were abandoned. Uh, but like it's just so cool. You don't see that a lot of you know time in in our day. You know of like just raw beauty like that yeah and, yes. and to get places we like to do is definitely travel to more like historical places as well kind of like that where there's a lot of history yeah those yeah. are always super cool to visit now that yeah. area you're talking about is that the ozarks yeah but yeah. you guys <clears throat> would probably fare better in the wachita's which is south of there um it's more of a gravel service road a uh, forest okay. service roads um, and, and they're really good. The Forest Service Department's really good at like doing control burns and stuff mm-hmm. and working with loggers because, you know, once they harvest, you know, something, they'll plant over here and they've got it on a nice regiment to where it looks like it's just never been touched. Oh, that's um, awesome. But like a lot of those uh, gravel roads are really as- accessible and there's rivers galore everywhere in Arkansas and yeah, streams and just like you guys could pull up on epic after epic camping spots you know for free yeah and definitely. and just have a ball and and not worry about your van for the most part you know most of those trails are very uh easy down there but yeah. Yeah, you guys would love it yeah we'll have to go down there eventually yeah, we're always adding stuff to our bucket list it's it's never ending i wouldn't say we even have a bucket list it's just it's the, a <laughs> world map at this point. yeah well right. yeah so are you guys ever interested in like doing international traveling oh yeah definitely i mean i think we still got a quite a bit of weight like with a way, bit of ways until then yeah because yeah. it, it's expensive that's yeah. really oh that's it's the only thing <laughs> i think i think breathing is expensive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially in like this consumerism world you know oh, where yeah. all this cool stuff's popping up left and right but it is what it is but I, it it's cool to dream you you wouldn't turn it down international travel no, no definitely, definitely not i mean we wouldn't turn down any sort of travel so cool yeah but i think right now our, our one of our more major goals is trying to bring the green jeep to all 50 states yeah i think really? that'd be cool i think it's been how to... many more you got left um that is a good question are you halfway there yes yeah, so you're probably more halfway. than halfway we're Definitely. probably it's probably around 30 it's been yeah. to i think i know personally you've been to 40 states i've been to 39 but i don't know about the jeep and then i know how many of the dogs have been to <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not sure about the the green jeep at least i think i was like 29 maybe 30 yeah yeah right. wow that's still that's impressive well, the name, Backcountry Beagles. Yeah, I guess we Let's should talk about them. Talk oh, about yeah. the dogs. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a kind of a the whole name. Kind of a big component in the. <laughs> yeah, forget about the name sometimes. Yeah, so uh, the beagles. So yeah, we got three beagles. I don't know how that happened. Yes, you do. It was you. Yeah, <laughs> but um, we got our the first beagle, Bella. We got her about four four years, four years ago. ago, and then we got the next one six months later, and then. It wasn't until about two or three years later we got Lily once we were in actually in uh, Colorado and I think we need to learn how to say no yeah, <laughs> to say adopting no to dogs. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what happened with the beagles. I don't know why. I think it was just beagles because we got Bella the first one and then we found a really great adoption rescue um, kennel through actually I think it's no it's Minnesota that she's through. Yeah. Yep. Um, and hmm. I mean it's just so hard to say no to a dog that needs help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we've got uh, two rescue dogs, mm-hmm. and then we recently got a third because our other two dogs are getting older, yep. Yep. and they're so well-behaved. I was wanting that to rub off on our new one. No, nope. It ain't going to happen yep. because she is a Frenchie, mm-hmm. and I don't know if the breed's just 
they're not there. They're super sweet, but they're not very, uh, I don't know. They don't retain things well. <laughs> retain so, information. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I don't know. She knows her name. She obviously knows when to eat and, but yeah, potty t- training has been a nightmare, but she's oh, super imagine. sweet. Three but. is a tough number. Uh, no, I mean we had the two dog, two of them for a while. We did the that whole five week road trip that we were talking they about were with, with two the two dogs, wow. and wow. that was really cool. Like we could really wrangle the two dogs, mm-hmm. and then we got like we literally went to Vegas with them, and we were in the casino mm. with the two dogs. It was funny. Really, they don't they don't have a no dog policy. No, there is no rules. In you Vegas. can do anything in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I tried to get away with murder. That didn't happen. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> no, that's cool though. So I, I I like dog people. They're fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know what I was gonna say. There was something on the tip. Oh, what do you guys do? Like for for like um, you guys stop every thirty minutes and let them walk or anything? And you, know, you got any routines for their travel? Like you know, if they get anxious or anything? Uh, they're they're like wicked good in the car. They've always always have been. Yeah, I mean, well, since they were probably like maybe two, two and a half, we've been traveling with them and they've gone camping. They've done ground tents. They've done rooftop tents. They've done hotels. They've done, nice. um, now well, they haven't done the van yet, but I'm sure they will. So I think they just gotten so comfortable with like any yeah. sort of travel. Yeah. Yeah. I think we just let them out whenever we need gas and then they're good. Yeah. Cool. They've done really well. I mean, I usually need to go to the bathroom more than they do. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it works out. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people that recently get into this overlanding thing, and they've got a dog at home, let's say, you know, they're four or five years old. They really want their dog to go. And, you know, it's a chore. It's a challenge if they're not it's used tough. to it. Yeah. And especially if you're adding, you know, your kids, because, you know, a lot of times wives don't even want to go. Um, females don't want to go camping out in the yeah, woods. Right. And it's, you know, it's 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 kind of hard to accommodate everyone to get to be a family, uh, you know, event. But, you know, I think slowly and surely people can can change a little bit or at least yeah, try right. depends yeah, on how willing yeah. they are to try it but yeah, i'm not gonna lie right. and say it's easy to take all three dogs but it's definitely no. really fun no I, we we got the third one lily and she's a freaking handful and she like rubbed off on the other ones and now they're all a handful <laughs> and <laughs> nice but, but we're they, gonna keep doing it so how old are they are um natalie and lily no nat gosh it's like children i can't remember their names um it's like <laughs> you bella, what's your name <laughs> exactly <laughs> bella and natalie are the older two in there Oh, they're almost five and a half now. Yep. And then Lily well, is gonna be three in December. So yeah, nice. Yeah, it's kind of puppyish still. And, mm-hmm. Oh, and she yeah, that Lily's a freaking puppy. She she's <laughs> crazy. <fun. laughs> cool. Well, what else do you guys want to talk about? I know we covered the dogs. We covered both of the the Cherokees. We covered the van. We covered some food. Mm. How do you guys plan your trips? Do you guys just like months in advance, or are you kind of just like, what do you guys want to do this weekend? Some, yeah, I guess some are uh, months in advance. Like, we go down to Arizona a lot, and that I'll have to take time off for because I have uh, three day weekends. I'll usually take off uh, two more days, so we have five days total. We can usually get done a lot in that time. Um, yeah, and then um, when you do take off time, like even if he does during the summer, I work at a university, so I have the summers off, so we're able to kind of work around that as well. Um, where even like his three day weekends are also um, available to do stuff as well. So those we can kind of do more on a whim um, mm-hmm. and just kind of go wherever, yeah, wherever, wherever the wind takes us, I guess. But the the bigger trips we do plan out a bit more in advance. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, another one we went up to Washington this winter. Uh, that was one that I took two extra days off. So that was like five. That might have been I took three days off. That was like a six day trip. Yeah, and we drove. It was in the dead of winter. We mm-hmm. we drove. Through a, it was like 17 hours straight in that green Cherokee. Wow. In, a, yeah. in snowstorms. It was nuts. But we, you, you switching off driving to a serious limit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's dedication right there. Uh, and, and you guys were winter camping, I guess, in, mm-hmm. your, in your rooftop tent? Yeah, yep. Um, we were we're actually Patreons of Dirt Lifestyle. You ever you oh, know him cool. on YouTube? Yeah, Nate. Yep. Yeah, we. Uh, so he had a, like a Patreon meetup and we went up there. Cool. And, yeah, we did like a. It was like a snow run, if you will. But it was a lot uh, of fun. It's crazy up there. Were you there. guys in one of his videos? Um, no, but do you know the YouTuber Edward Shin? Yeah, yeah. We were in his YouTube video. Do you know which one? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was some sort of winter camp. It was like was it last year or two years ago? No, it was last year. It was last winter. Um, it was about I have to look that up. It was like you, you're in the Green Cherokee. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was like Patreon 
winter meetup or something like that. But it was a yeah, lot of fun. That's cool. Those guys yeah. are really nice, and we're hope hopefully gonna go do that again this year. Yeah, that's what stinks. Like for there's, you've got people in the Midwest, kind of you, you know some YouTubers and stuff. Yeah, like Arkansas, and that's it. And then you've got maybe a couple on the East Coast, maybe. Right. And then everybody's out west, past <laughs> the Rockies, and it's like, I want to go hang out with you guys, but... Yeah, that's a far drive for you, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was talking to uh, guys on a podcast with earlier today, and he is in Northern California, and I'm like, I'm going to come out there one day, but I don't want to drive out there, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably just fly, and I'll just ride with you. And yeah, for like, real. Okay, that's fine. I'm like, there's no... It's probably... My sister lives in Oregon, and I've never driven there. And they drove down here for the wedding years ago, and uh, it took them like three days. And it yeah. was just wow. like, no that's, thanks. It's yeah. no joke. That's that's rough. Yeah, <laughs> I think it, it's definitely beneficial if you like driving, and we love driving. So, I mean, mm. just like the different amount of like states and climates and scenery that you see, culture, just... even stateside, you see all this different culture, oh, different yeah. different things you don't get back home. Yeah. Stuff we take for granted you know literally wherever you're at so no it's always fun to uh start on the trip and like say we're going to arizona it's always fun to get down there but then when you got to turn around and come home that's that's the tough ride <laughs> yeah that is yeah. a tough ride but so, we enjoy driving so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> enjoy. Uh, yeah. so on your on your week your weekend trips do you guys try to limit it to like maybe two trips a weekend one trip a weekend or does it matter is um, there a limit on that I mean, like this time of year, we'll do, I mean, we'll do like two nights usually or three nights if we leave on like a Saturday night. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, either go down like this time of year, we're going into the Rockies right now. Like we'll go down mm -hmm. near Ure and Telluride, yeah, we'll Colorado. To escape the heat from the valley yeah. a little bit. Yeah, because where we are, it's like 100, 100 degrees, like all July and August. Um, yeah. And then in a few months, we'll be heading to Moab and... We'll do our Moab trips every weekend. Mm -hmm. So it'll cool down yeah. out there. But nice. I mean, we have a big calendar. We got a Google calendar where we try to figure out like where we're going to go when um, and just based off of whether or not we want to go to these places and like what, you know, if it's going to make good content and stuff. But more, it, yeah. it's obviously geared more towards if we actually want to go and do yeah. those types of things before it's actually content. But I mean, we're usually right now, we're, I mean, actually, we just finished two videos, but like the Rubicon, the other um our what did we just what was the video oh, the van build and then we we're like we were filming like three videos at a time yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it got That's a little crazy. wild <laughs> i like it though it's different content and all that and whatever floats your boat yeah so. there's a little bit of something oh. for everybody yeah i think so yep. sweet is there anything you know, budget overland. Is there any kind of gear you guys purchase that's relatively off the radar of most that you're like, you know what? I would definitely endorse this product. Hmm. Um, I would say just like the usual stuff for me because I won't. I wouldn't say we have like a lot of no we're like not weird really gear, big like gear, like fancy, like over the top type gear. People, I feel yeah. like we want to have the good quality, like essentials. I would yeah, say. like I mean, we got our rooftop tent two years ago. It's it's like one of those. Uh, it's like the Smitty cheaper build. one. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah. mini built, the one that folds over. I'm going to mm -hmm. use that thing until it breaks. I keep telling Ash, once the zipper breaks or something, then I'll get something nicer. But yeah. that thing works great for us. Yeah. Um, we bought yeah. that also right before we got married and we're supposed to go on that honeymoon trip. So it was like we were trying to save money. So it's like we were <laughs> right. trying to do budget. Right. Rooftop tents can get expensive. <laughs> but Yeah, they're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, I, I I love a rooftop tent, though. It's definitely a whole different experience than being on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say, uh, well, the one Overland thing now that we have that I wouldn't go back without is probably our Garmin, the, the satellite GPS. In reach. Yeah. yeah, which is like more of like a safety type thing, but it, it just gives me peace of mind. Yeah, we were, me and my brother were out in Moab uh, beginning of this year, and we were on a trail for like 14 hours. We were doing Poison Spider, and... Ash had it. Ash literally called the cops <laughs> because, and they were like, "Just wait until you, like if it gets dark and you haven't heard from him, then give us another um, call." But and then I ended yeah, up I, her. I I just get nervous when uh when you guys are out on the trail for a really long time. I haven't heard from you. Yeah, or, yeah. Like, yeah. I just have sure. a, a nervous Nelly, which is surprising <laughs> that I do any of the things that we're doing. But yeah, Garmin, gotta get yourself one if you're gonna be Garmin, in that country. Cool. Um, I'd say also I. 
last uh, winter, I got a diesel heater. Oh, yes. That thing. Yeah, I was going to ask if you had one. Can't go without that awesome. in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. No, if you think about it, like, I don't know, like, is it the, not Vier or something like that. Oh, there was Vivor. a Chinese. Yeah. That's what we Vivor. got. Vivor. Yeah. Yeah. So I bought one of those, about 100, 120 bucks, whatever, and I built it myself. You could buy the pre-kitted ones that are already in the box and yeah, whatnot yeah. for like 140 but if you're gonna buy a good quality down blanket, you're looking at 120 bucks all day long anyway. Know. <laughs> you know, for a good quality. So why not just get a diesel heater and take your bed sheet and you know camp in 17 degree weather and literally have an 80 yeah, in your and tent. it keeps your tent dry. Like usually, if you're camping yeah. in the winter and you don't have that, or like you have a propane one, it, the inside of your tent is you know soaked yeah. wet by the end of it. Yeah, we used a propane one, one of those uh, Mister Buddy heaters before that, yeah. like all like the beginning of last winter, and. You can't dry anything off after you've been hanging out in the snow all day. It's just rough. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, diesel cool. heater's a good way to go. I I agree. Guys, we're coming up on an hour. What do we need to plug? How how can people get a hold of you? How can people watch your content? How can um, people support you? Go you, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> can uh subscribe to us on YouTube at Backcountry Beagles. I think that uh that's it, Backcountry Beagles, right? Yes, we okay. are back country beagles. <laughs> and then Instagram, it's backcountry beagles. Backcountry beagles. Yeah, that's all. And then really. is that all we have? We do have a website. We haven't really been doing much with it. Um, that is backcountrybeagles.com. Yeah. Um, we're gonna hopefully try to do some more stuff. With that. More I tried time. to do a little bit of a, a blog at one point, but yeah. uh, I I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, we're, we're kind. Of, <laughs> if we're, I'm editing both. videos too right now, yeah. it's just a lot. Yeah, we figured if we can both start editing videos and just focusing on out. YouTube. Push yeah. something out every week, it, it, the better way to go. Yeah, but I would say YouTube, go to YouTube, subscribe, do that. Yeah. Um, and we also have Instagram. We post some of our pictures from trips that um, we've been on and all that good stuff. And yeah. then, um, our website, if you want to maybe learn a little bit more about us, see some pictures of the pups, that good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Guys, appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, appreciate you for having us. Yeah, we'll do a follow up maybe one day down the road whenever you guys get your van going. Yeah, love definitely. to hear more about it and stuff. So. It drives now. It's just, it's just not, the inside's not built. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's the little things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Till next time. Bye-bye. Sweet. Bye-bye. Goodbye. That wasn't horrible, was it? No, that was cool, man.